Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of My Favorite Alpha, where we invite current musicians to cover their favorite alpha song. We get to talk about how that song has influenced our future artists, the song's history, and alpha's history in general. We're your hosts today. My name is Chloe. And I'm Tadashi. And I'm really excited to be here. Uh, Ray is going to be doing a song for us. We're here back at the legendary BYG in Shibuya. This is not the same day as another one that we shot. Not at all. That's all I have <laughs> to say about that. Uh, Want to go check it out? Yeah, let's go check out Ray. Let's do it. Do you like Ram?
Thank you. Hello, 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 hi. Look at all the cameras, one at one each time. All right, okay, cool. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for your performance downstairs. Oh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. Of course, of yeah. course. It was, it was really great. <laughs> I want to start with just mm -hmm. if you could tell our, you know, millions of viewers mm -hmm. uh, what the song was. Oh, okay. So the song was called Ramuauski, which means "Do you like Ram?" Do you like rum? No. <laughs> Do you like rum? Yeah. <laughs> the pronunciation gets complicated in my mind. But anyway, um, so the song is originally by Minako Yoshida. Mm -hmm. And I really have been loving her music for a while now. But originally, I started listening to her stuff because uh, this particular song was written by Harry Harumi Hosono, mm -hmm. which everybody probably knows. But um, he was the member of YMO and Happy End, and he's been producing all these uh, famous artists like 80s idols like Matsuda Seiko and Nakamori Akina and all those legendary idols and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So so he wrote the, the song for Minako-san, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with the yeah, tune. Amazing. Can you tell us a bit about the experience of performing mm -hmm. um, from such an, you know, it's a, I mean, Shemiyako is obviously a legend, mm -hmm. and we're here at BYG, which is truly an important mm -hmm. uh, live space, I think, mm -hmm. in the history of Japanese music. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience getting mm -hmm. to do that? Well, first off, like BYG, I knew the name of the venue, and um, I heard it, I think it started at, um, in 1969, or... Mm -hmm goes back then and stealing our trivia questions I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well it has a lot of history and um i really like happy end and all these people that have performed here are my heroes as well so mm -hmm. it was um an honor to play in that um in in this place mm -hmm. and um also tonight uh the um the drummer was daichi ito um, who is a long um, old friend of mine, but also the last time we performed was with Harry mm. in his 50th um, anniversary concert, and which was held in 2019 in November mm -hmm. in Tokyo Kokusai Forum, and um, yeah, so like that reunion was really special too. Mm. So um, doing Harry's song and with Daichi, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, and he was great. A little round of applause. Yeah, for yeah. Nice yeah. song. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. While you were preparing for this performance, mm -hmm. did you find that you were learning anything new from the song, either mm -hmm. lyrically or compositionally? Um, when I first listened to this song, it was more of the chord progression and the melody mm -hmm. that really. Um, that I really liked about it, but um, as I prepared for the song and I looked at the lyrics, like it had a really interesting storyline to it. It was a lo mm -hmm. love story that had um, like uh, um, really detailed lyrics. So like you can see how the girl that just saw like saw a guy at a party and she falls in love, love with that guy and there's all these emotions that evolve through the song mm -hmm. and it's it's really interesting how the person who wrote it was a guy but you know mm -hmm. harry is a guy but like um it amazes me how much he understands how a girl feels you know mm -hmm. <laughs> i actually i think True. The yeah. lyrics were by yeah, yeah. Oh, ah, yeah. Okay, so maybe that was a collaboration yeah, between I the think two. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it um, Hosono's original uh, or rendition of that song? Didn't he s sing it from the perspective of a guy? Is that right? I believe so. Yeah. In, in uh, oh, really? heaven, or is it? Oh heaven yeah, yeah. He yeah. he yeah. did he did cover that song. He mm -hmm. self covered that song later mm -hmm. on in right. his career. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the lyrics are different right. from from probably like you know a guy's perspective. So right. That's another version that made me 
um, it'll be interesting to, you know, mm. listen to. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only song with, like, guest vocals on that album, which is Yushin mm. I think, I think, I could be wrong. There could be other songs that have guest vocals, but I think that the only guest vocal is Yushin on that mm. whole album. Oh, that, that Heavenly, yeah, yeah, Heavenly yeah, yeah. Music, yeah? That's what it was called, mm. yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Womp. Um, <laughs> Uh, all right, I want to take this chance to introduce you mm -hmm. to our audience. Uh -huh. I'm uh, actually doing a project called Kilt, which is um, a project of me collaborating with different artists that I have um, had relationships with. And I released a couple of singles, digital singles, um, from last year, I think, so 2021. Mm -hmm. And um, this year, I'm planning to uh, release a song with Harry, too, so. <laughs> yeah. That's How big. was that? Well, it's like, it's it's a big bang, right, for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's awesome. It's, it's, I can't believe it, like, when, of course, when I offered him, I, I didn't think he would say okay, so mm -hmm. that's that's one of the things that I admire about him. Like, he's really open-minded mm -hmm. and open to really, like, young artists and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. and that's so cool. Fantastic. Looking forward to, please check it out. <laughs> yeah. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so that's who you are. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess we should move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so back to Ramuwa Oski. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose this song by Miyako Yoshida? Um, there, there was uh, several songs that I did want to sing, but I don't know. Like, um, there's no like specific reason. Like, I really like singing the song when I'm washing dishes and whatnot. <laughs> 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 it really, yeah, the melody really sticks to me and. Mm. Um, yeah, nowadays, like, you can listen to all types of different music in subscription and in digital, and people might skip the song in 20 or 30 seconds, and mm. that's another way of listening to music, like, browsing through, like, the songs that you want to listen to, but because I was brought up listening to CDs and records and that kind of physical, mm -hmm. um, how do you say it? like physical music, you know? So I liked the way it wasn't fitting the, the the 2021 mood. Like you have to listen to the whole song to understand the story, right? Mm. Ah, yeah, so right. I, I actually like the way the, the structure of the song. Mm -hmm. You have to listen to up until the end to understand the song. That, that trait really like um, appealed to me, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the structure, hopefully it's okay to dive into this now, mm -hmm. but we noticed that in your performance, you mm -hmm. did kind of arrange it differently. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It was more of a swing type yes. beat, more laid back and relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what was your, yeah. Yeah, bluesy, bluesy. Exactly. yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah, she even threw in some blues chops yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what was, yeah, your intention with that? Um, because the song is so good, like th there's this rule inside of me where when you can sing the song with a single guitar and just vocals, and if it sounds good, it's it's a good song. You know, mm -hmm. like you can you can dress it up with all these like, booms and bangs, but if if the song doesn't sound good when it's just stripped you know down. yeah stripped down, mm -hmm. like and Damawoski is one of those songs where you can arrange it to blue or red or orange or pink, and it still sounds good. So mm -hmm. we had a lot of options when we were rehearsing and. Mm -hmm. I thought like doing a shuffle blues twist to it was really original and I felt, you know, good singing it. So we loved it. We talked earlier about how you felt like it was like a story on the Titanic or something. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I, I was wondering why you'd chosen to take it in like a, a blues direction, obviously, because the original is. I I don't even know exactly what to call it, but it's got some Latin beats uh -huh, to it. It reminds yeah. me of um, you know the song Brazil. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so kind of reminds me mm -hmm. of that. Dun, 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 mm -hmm. dun, dun, yeah, dun, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Hosono's version is like bossa nova, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. So like, there's this kind of 
it kind of I, I'm sure it connects back to his mm. kind of like doing like orientalism from mm. the perspective of mm. what would have been called an oriental person at yeah. the time mm-hmm. um, and kind of like subverting those tropes mm-hmm. but it's it's definitely got like a kind of tropical feel to it yeah. so I imagine for him mm-hmm. it was or for when, when they they'd originally like worked on it it was much more of like like um going on a cruise or something like that Mm-mm. so the fact that like you talked about how like you felt it was like the, the titanic <laughs> like someone's final meal on that ship that boat is gonna sink those people are gonna die but they don't know they, it's gonna sink at, at that point mm, of the of course. movie right yeah right. of course but yeah. but the fact that like you're kind of like the, that that was your thinking and it's a blues finally clicked for me i was like oh <laughs> the blues is obviously like generally like not very Somber. happy yeah um, actually yeah. wow so it almost feels yeah. like you're you're um uh foreshadowing what's gonna happen to them through the choice of oh. your arrangement mm. at least in terms of like how you imagined the story would go comes through in your arrangement so i think it's really really interesting <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I didn't think about it that deeply, but let's let's yeah make it that. Yeah. Okay, it was totally your yeah. idea. Yeah. You were, it was it's totally your intention yeah, to yeah, imply yeah. that they're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there might be there there might be a bad ending to that song anyway, though. You, yeah. you don't know. Even the, you know the ship might not sink, but the the guy might have just you know talked to her in just like a casual way, and right. the girl is, is just thinking you know he. He's he one he kind of likes me kind of thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but nobody knows the knows, knows the ending. So. Right, right. <laughs> I just thought it like like I feel like even if you weren't thinking about it like necessarily uh-huh. like Lyric consciously. Wise. Yeah, yeah, consciously. I feel like the fact that you imagined it being <laughs> like the Titanic. Uh-huh. Like maybe even just subconsciously uh-huh. put you in that. Ah, I think this would make sense in this one blues. Cuz you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. blues with sad songs. I did, That's I did true. like throw in there like a minor penta solo just to spice it up, ah. though. Right. Because ah. most of you know the tropical arrangement mm-hmm. is more of like a happy, Mm-mm-mm-mm. cheery kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, like we did have like a solo there, and I thought that in the original version, as I. I, I did say it in the in the performance, but you know there's the lines of, do you do you want coke? No, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And that seemed like a really dark joke to me. So like it, it sounded like black mm. black humor for some reason. Oh. Oh. And and the and the way like the recorded version gets like the the. They start screaming the lines and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah, it really escalates. Yeah, yeah. that seemed mm. kind of like sarcastic kind of right yeah to me so i wanted to like put the minor penta solo Mm, 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 mm. in there yeah it's so interesting i think how everyone interprets things because like for me i just felt like like when i was listening to the song and based off the lyrics i just felt like it was i mean because correct me if i'm wrong but like she's kind of waiting the whole time right Mm, yeah so i just figured it was like the waiter being like are you gonna order something (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or not yeah are you gonna or do you want a rum and coke <laughs> oh okay okay oh i see that, i mean that's how i saw it uh-huh. but it's so interesting to hear like the way that you saw it and and how again like it kind it kind of just comes through subconsciously in a lot of the choices that you're making like you're mm. making very conscious choices mm-hmm. but like some of that reasoning behind it could mm. you know just be how you're receiving it. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay, so we're going to transition a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, We want to see how much you already know about Minako Yoshida. So I'm not not good at this. (laughs) It's all good. Tadashi's like a walking encyclopedia, so I'm sure you can help. (laughs) And and walking encyclopedia that's wrong. (laughs) So would you mind telling the audience um, a little bit of background about Minako Yoshida? Um, so I think she was born in 1963 in Saitama, and um, in high school I think sh- she met he, uh, her her fellow you know musicians like um, Harry and mm-hmm. also I think Matsumoto Takashi and um, these members of, of several bands and I think they 
um, invited her to to sing or play with them, and um, and her her first appearance in like a professional like mu mu musical like situation was probably on flute, I think, um, on Otaki Eiichi's um, music. Yeah, nice. And um, so the first song that I I heard of her um, Minako san was uh, Tobira no Fuyu, which was um, the the back band was Caramel Mama, mm -hmm. and um, Harry produced it. So it was really like natural for me to start listening to her music from that album, mm -hmm. and I really liked liked that album like lyric wise and arrangement wise. Especially the Tobira no Fuyu, which is the lead track mm. of that album. The the bass line is really epic, and I really loved um, the the vibe that it had. Mm -hmm. So after that, I started listening to her other um, albums as, albums as well, like um, Monochrome and Flapper, which is the album that Yamaoski is in, mm -hmm. and Twilight Zone. And, all those albums, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sounds so. like you did your research. Born <laughs> yes. in 1963 <laughs> in Saitama. Yes. <laughs> well, it's a it's a brief. You know, probably she has like a, a lot of um, in between. You know, things that I, I've missed. But yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure she had a life between 1963 <laughs> and debuting. Of course, of course, of course. You know, but. Yeah, I, yeah. I was just laughing earlier because like I'm running out of trivia questions for later. <laughs> right, right. You're just hitting all the facts. Which is great, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, um yeah. was there anything else that you wanted to add? Or I guess you, you pretty much you got most of it. Yeah. I don't even I don't even know. Part, yeah, yeah, I don't even is... know what to add. I'm like looking through my notes. But the re the main reason I really like her music is her voice, you know. Like yeah. she's she's um, she plays different instruments like mm. the flute and the keyboard and stuff like that but like and probably she writes her own lyrics and stuff but yeah what what is the most beautiful thing about her is I think her voice she has a voice and and it's really smooth and rich and and of course she's really technique wise talented as well mm. and um, precise on pitch and rhythm mm -hmm. and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, which is fabulous and because my voice it's it's just a um, self um, how do you say like um, when I listen to my voice I feel like it's more on the trebly side mm -hmm. and it has a sharpness to it which is kind of um, like kind of rock vocals blues rock vocals which is a good thing and a bad thing for me so like um i like i really like um minako's type of voice mm. like rich and smooth and has has a really deep mid low range hmm. i think it's really unique especially at that point in japan there weren't a lot of, uh -huh. of people with such a yeah. powerful like yeah. full voice yeah yeah yeah, yeah and exactly. i think she's an extremely versatile singer uh -huh. as well especially yeah I, mean, I think so too i feel bad saying like especially for japan and whatnot but like truly i think that's one of the reasons that she made such an mm -hmm. impact it was mm -hmm. like whoa someone can sing like this mm -hmm. in japanese yeah 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 whoa right yeah. yeah, almost like you know a Johnny Mitchell vibe, right. like like a jazz jazz singer vibe. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I I feel listening to her. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I mean, and that really came through with this particular tune. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So. Yeah, I think you you got pretty much. Oh, <laughs> well, oh, oh, oh! And speaking about her voice, I wanted to add because like I don't I don't think it's just her singing voice. I think it's also her like worldview and her voice because. Uh, she has like this anecdote about uh, Yume de Aitara, which is also in Flapper, mm. but it's a it's a Eiichi Otaki song, mm -hmm. and she like I was reading somewhere about like she didn't really necessarily want that released at mm. one point because it's a good song and it's probably going to be a hit, mm. but she didn't want like the song that she's known for to be something that was written by somebody else. 
Oh, I sympathize with that so much. Right? Mm. I think it's you it's, feel that too, don't you? Yeah, yeah I understand. <laughs> totally. I think it's really interesting. I think it's interesting that she did put it out, mm. and at this point, like so many people have covered that song, mm -hmm. and for whatever his Otaki's, I don't have his uh his label name, but he like started a label later on, and in that label catalog. Like that is like one of the standards that's been mm -hmm. covered like an insane amount of times, mm -hmm. and people always associate it with Yoshida Minako, oh, mm -hmm. which is not what she was hoping for. Mm -hmm. But I also don't think that it's it's necessarily like the the song that she's known for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right. she, like people know that song by her, but like when you think about her, there's definitely like a bunch of other songs that you mm -hmm. can think of mm -hmm. that are like uniquely her. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't, maybe she just didn't even have to worry about that in the first yeah, place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that really just shows how, how much technique she had, mm. right? Mm. Mm. Because I think if you're not that good at singing, like, you can stand out in a really bad sense, you know? Like, yeah. even if the song right. is really good. <laughs> so, yeah. right. I think she was so, I don't know, like, talented enough that the song was the most... How do you say? Like when someone listens to the song, the impression that that the listener has is more about the song and the melody and the song itself more mm -hmm. than the singer. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. totally. We'd also earlier discussed you potentially doing Japanese rumba by Hosano. Yes, yeah, yes. Sure. And you've also spoken a lot about uh, about Harumi Hosano. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what he means to you? Oh well. Uh, well, he is like a living legend. I really look up to him. And the first time I met him was in, I was invited to his radio program to, mm -hmm. to talk. And and when I actually met him, he was really open-minded and down to earth and really charming. And, mm -hmm. and that really like made sense because all the things that he's done in his career, it all, it always has this playfulness to it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like he's really having fun with the music. Mm -hmm. And I think on the program, I asked him, what, what is your motivation? Like you've been making and performing music and producing people for like 50 years. Yeah. And, and how can you still find the motivation when mm -hmm. you've done so many things? You know, mm -hmm. like why don't you run out of ideas or just mm -hmm have the power or the you know like how can you feel like doing more mm -hmm. and his answer was because it because it's fun you mm -hmm. know and that was that was like so iconic to That's me so cool goals. it's such a yeah. cool <laughs> yeah, goals, right yeah it's, goals. it's almost like why why wouldn't i <laughs> like, yeah yeah what are you talking about <laughs> uh -huh. and when when you make something that you love like your profession like mm -hmm. your job mm -hmm. it's it's not that easy right like mm -hmm. sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to and of course you know like business wise you can't always you have to compromise in uh, in different ways and probably he has done all these um you know he has compromised in in his career mm -hmm. of course but still like what the 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 main reason why he was doing music was because it was, you know, it was fun to do it. And, and you know, like, it really hit me hard. It made me love him even more, you know. Wow. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah. yeah. So, and I mean, how also, when you were like, oh, yeah, he's been producing music 50 years. I was like, has it been? Oh, shit. Okay. This record came out 45 years ago mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's just insane mm -hmm. and he, like how many other people are like still actively releasing like globally yeah you know? yeah, yeah yeah i think that's there's not a lot of people out mm. there it's right? it's it's sir paul or harry i think like the 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 um, how do you say like his interest in like he wants to know new like the 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 latest music and the latest technology to mm. make music like you know hojono house 
mm. is a reinterpretation of his his album Hotono House. Mm. But like he learned how to do like Pro Tools and all this gangster type uh-huh. of like, you know, <laughs> um, digital stuff, which uh-huh. I don't even know how to do. You right. know, like uh-huh. he's he's I don't know, over 70s? Yeah, I think I think he's in his and late he, yeah, 70s. He's still wow. trying to learn something new, you know? It's wild. Yeah, That's it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Am I, am I wrong? How old is he? Is he I feel like he's like 78 or something. That, that could be wrong. Sense. That could be wrong. That could be very Maybe wrong. we can <laughs> annotate it later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His that's how old he, he that's, really is. That's how right old here. Old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like staring into the void between all the cameras yeah. right now, too. <laughs> yeah. that, right here. That's right. how old. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Mm-hmm. Should we transition then to listening to the actual yeah. recording? Let's, let's, uh, yeah. Let's yeah. See we that. have. I have a. Uh uh-huh. Yes. Can we can we play? Aha! Uh-huh. Aha! Uh-huh. Someone's on top of it. They've already taken the record. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, that sounded like the chair is about to break. I'm happy. Hopefully not. Oh. Oh. Obi Wan. Caramel Papa. What's caramel Papa? Is it like a live? Recording. I love her outfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's front. so cute. It's really cute. I noticed you're still wearing your uh, pick too. I I do this all the time, because oh, yeah. when when I don't know, like when um a package comes, I can open it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that happens. Come on, multiple uses. Yeah, yes. <laughs> really. Yeah, I, I actually put it in here, like. Oh. So that I can play whenever. Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Crazy. Totally just yeah. <laughs> I when love I that at the very end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I heard that, that that freaked me out, kind of. Oh, wait. Yeah. Should we should we play it again? Because we, we totally talked over yeah. the whole thing. Time. Can we can we have it like, turned up a little bit? Yeah. I mean, is there anything else? I mean, I feel like we've really talked about the song mm. a lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But I think it's like, what's so what's so fascinating is that this this whole community of, of the musicians and the connections yeah. like mm-hmm. so many talented people in the this, this same era you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she's doing backing vocals for you know Tatsuro san or mm-hmm. Taki san mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. playing different instruments mm-hmm. and whatnot but everyone in in that time in the Tokyo area playing music they were also talented mm-hmm. and it's it's really like I get really jealous all the time because right. <laughs> you know like this community of really talented people and I think that that it's it's um, the fact that they're together really like um, boosts the the whole level of totally. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah definitely I yeah. mean I think it helps that I think everyone at the time was kind of broke. <laughs> I think just because like you know it's so interesting a lot of the alpha stuff like you know Flapper is obviously like a classic record at mm-hmm. this point and like the the Horo album that Sho had done mm. uh, in our previous episode uh, one of our previous episodes is also like a classic record now but it only got up to like 70 something on the charts and that's mm-hmm. the only album that he had that charted uh, and you know Flapper didn't get, get close to the charts mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it's 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 awesome that people mm. have like come back and discovered this. Mm. But I think that like there's definitely something to be said about like this being like before the real like commercial success mm. of everyone's careers. Mm. So everyone was kind of like in the same mm. boat almost. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. And it was much less about money and much more about let's just have a good yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. Not to together. say that it was about money later, uh-huh, but uh-huh. like I'm sure you know, I'm sure that like. Success can get in the way in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah I, I hope people, you know, start to, you know, because everyone talks about, say, like, you know, Muscle Shoals, uh-huh. or like, like Chu was uh-huh. talking about, um, people talk about Muscle Shoals, people talk about the, uh, the, uh, the Wrecking Crew, like uh-huh. the LA uh-huh. studio uh-huh. musicians. Uh-huh. Um, and essentially what we're talking about uh-huh. here is pretty much the uh-huh. same yeah, thing, I you know. Think so. Caramel Mama, obviously, um, that you were talking about with uh, her first record. Mm-hmm. Caramel Mama, 
are Tin Pan Alley. Mm, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, they're literally, it's mm -hmm. the same four people. Mm -hmm. And the <laughs> amount of, yeah. like, records that they're backing mm -hmm. is just insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I'm sure if we look here, like, most of these, <laughs> a bunch of hers, right? Like, was, I feel like even this, Oh wait, no, this might have been recorded in the US. It's like, uh -huh. if, if it was recorded in Japan, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty much every, I mean, this record specifically. Yeah. I almost don't want you to look at the back right now because uh, it's okay. I'm, it's gonna, I'm gonna up the ante on the <laughs> trivia. I know, I know that there was a trivia question in there about like, who was the other bassist? The trivia question is now, who are all the musicians? Oh uh, no, I can't record? answer that. <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna show you the back okay. of this right now. Uh -huh. But yeah, pretty much everyone that was mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. is like all the studio musicians, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like all the studio mm -hmm. musicians in Japan at that point, which is just wild to think about. Mm -hmm. Like everyone was just doing this all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for the most part, if you look at any Japanese record from that time mm -hmm. period, somebody from this record is on it. Mm -hmm. Insane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stacked. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> truly. <laughs> Nice. So nice. So nice. I, so the one thing I can't figure out, and Chloe and I were talking about this earlier, mm. do you know, I mean, I, I feel like you probably wouldn't if I couldn't find it, but maybe you have some inside info. Do you know who is the one saying, ramen Coca-Cola? I was, I was thinking it was Harry, but it isn't, right? I have we no, there's know. no credits there's anywhere. No way to find I it, can't find yeah. it, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure if I read like 300 more books, it's like <laughs> somewhere so, in there. Well, um, sure. I, my most favorite album from Yellow Magic Orchestra is Multiples, and Multiples has so many dialogue in there. I didn't bring Multiples. We well, because everything. of the Snake Man show, right? Yeah, I yeah. really love the Snake Man show. And not only uh. that, but I really love the, the conversations. Hello, Mr. Ohara. Yeah, well, hello, Mr. Ohara. And, and like, um, do you like Japan? Yeah, do you. <laughs> uh, right? Yeah. 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 That was uh, the answer. <laughs> Man, I really love that album, and um, I think uh, Ibu Masato, mm -hmm. which is uh, act, um, which is an actor, mm -hmm. a famous actor in Japan. Like he, he's been um, another guy, another famous guy. Two guys that are not in the band mm -hmm. are talking in there, mm -hmm. and um, Harry does like several characters in that right. album. So, right. like I was thinking, like maybe maybe it's the it's okay. the same character he's been using in, in his wild that, stuff. That, that would make sense. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I it, it must be. Yeah. Maybe next time you, you get to see him, you can ask him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll ask him and, that. And oh let, us know. let and us know. We'll, we'll like add it into like the description <laughs> in the video. Yeah. Like, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> by the way. Very yeah. important. Uh -huh. not, not to go off on another unnecessary tangent but <laughs> the the drummer for, for for my band back in new york was when i showed him the snake man show stuff he was like they use this as a sample in the tv show i watched as a kid and he's from like chicago mm -hmm. wow so like i i don't know what show it was i don't remember but mm -hmm. somehow that made its way onto american television mm -hmm. in like the 80s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 80s wow 80s 90s i don't know how old he is 90s? Let's just Maybe assume 90s. 90s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we should probably move on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Trivia time. Yay. Let's do it. Okay, so we are going to ask you a couple of questions, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Test your knowledge. <laughs> also test the audience's knowledge. Okay. Um, so we'll ask questions about Minako Yoshida, maybe about Alpha Records uh -huh. um, in general. So mm -hmm. let's get to it. What year mm -hmm. was Flapper released? 1976. How did you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll start easy. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Tell us your story. I I feel like a broken record at this point. <laughs> <laughs> what label was Flapper released under? <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
this is this is originally not um, alpha, right? You're taking all our trivia questions. <laughs> well, that's because you wrote all the answers. You know, I can't I can't act I as if I don't know the. I this didn't. Stuff. I didn't know they were gonna send it to you. Oh my goodness. I was so. <laughs> I seriously considered like redoing the whole trivia section, like an entire making it like a bunch of new questions. I think there's one question in there that I added after. Oh really? So. Yeah, probably I don't. I I can't answer that one. So. Hopefully. Yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise, you're just stealing a perfect score, and that's just not fair to all like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll act as if I don't know like the specifics, uh, and then you can. We don't need. We don't. It's okay. <laughs> Cat's out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I screwed up. It's all. It's all my fault. I'm sorry to all of you out there that thought that. This was real. It's all fake. Everything online is fake. Uh, Everything like filmed is all fake. <laughs> and there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it was released on RCA. Mm -hmm. But it was produced. I uh, see. I don't know if it'll have this. It'll say alpha. Oh yeah, it does say alpha right here. Mm. But I'm pretty sure that like, not all the pressings said alpha. So I, I think this next question that you have, I don't ah. think was in this original. We'll see, we'll see. Okay. You, might, you might know the answer anyway. What was the first record released under Alpha Records? Um, around 1977. Got all? Alpha, so Alpha Records, not uh, Alpha Music, if that makes oh. sense. Is it different? Yeah, so Alpha, mm. as a record company, mm -hmm. that when they made their own uh, alpha stuff. Oh, okay. Let me ask. I think it's Hikouki Gumo. No, that's also way before. Oh, really? Yeah, so Alpha Records, the first record that was released as an alpha record is one of your favorites. Oh, really? Kazumi san! <laughs> yeah, because I know you really like Kazumi Otanabe. Oh, yeah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, Kazumi Otanabe. <laughs> well, you know, I have like a whole big story about Kazumi san. Oh. Because, you know, the reason why I started listening to everyone that we've been talking about, like uh -huh. Tatsuro-san, Otaki-san, uh -huh. YMO, Yoshida Miyoko-san, uh -huh. Yana Akiko, and uh -huh. everyone, uh -huh. is because of Kazumi-san. And oh. I've been playing classical guitar since I was four years old. Right. And Kazumi-san is like a classical guitar Japanese, you know, hero. Mm -hmm. So I've been always looking up to him and... When I was in elementary school, mm. I went to see his concert, and he played in um, with a quartet, um, a classical guitar quartet called LAGQ, and mm. I really um, liked their music as well. And I looked up to Kazumi-san, so I went to their concert, mm. and he signed my CD, and oh. it was like a really memorable experience for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I found out later on that Kazumi-san not only played classical t style of music, but he played in this band called Young Magic Orchestra. And uh, um, you know the supporting musicians was Yano Akiko-san mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and all these really talented musicians. And, and then that really got me into the whole, you know, like the, mm. the, the culture, the right. whole culture, yeah. So he, okay. he's really like an important, um, he means a lot to me, his music, yeah. I'm glad that I was able to sneak in a question <laughs> for you. Yeah. Uh, I wish we could tell you more about like what Alpha Records is and what isn't Alpha Records, but we're unfortunately running out of okay. time. Because <laughs> we got, I mean, we it's got good. Lot, we, we got a lot, lot of interesting, yeah, I mean, we went all over the place. Unfortunately, it means the trivia section is going to be cut short. <sighs> but it's okay because you knew all the answers except for this one. Right, so, which do we... Ever say it out loud? Oh yeah, I don't right. think we said the answer to it. Uh, we, I, I guess we never actually said the name of the record. Oh, the Mermaid Boulevard. Well, oh, yeah. By Kazumi and the Gentle Thoughts. There we go. Mm -hmm. That handsome man. Yeah. There we go, audience. Okay. I, I even wanted to talk about Mr. <coughs> Murai Kunihiko. Ah. Yeah, because yeah, we haven't been you know the English-speaking audience probably knows Murai Hiro more than Murai Kunihiko. Yes. 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 That is definitely De definitely true. I I would really love to go into it. Yeah. Luckily, we are working on a documentary to kind of cover 
that. So oh, okay. hopefully for for everyone out, you know, watching, like mm -hmm. go check out that when it's out. It should be out soon. Mm -hmm. Um, but unfortunately, we do not have time yeah. to talk about it. So look forward Sorry, to that Budaisa. coming, yeah, <laughs> coming up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that concludes our trivia section. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Um, right. Let us know if you got three out of three, I guess, mm -hmm. in the comments. <laughs> um, we're going to just kind of, I'm going to jumble all the questions pretty much into mm -hmm. one. Okay. Um, who, are, who are some of your influences? within Alpha, without Alpha, mm -hmm. other than who we've already spoken about, and who would you like to see uh, perform at My Favorite Alpha next? And if you have like a song as well, like if you have like, you want to see this song performed by this person or just simply mm -hmm. this person perform? Um, well, you know, I've repeatedly mentioned, I, I really love YMO, so I mm -hmm. would really love them, love to see them perform, but mm -hmm anyone you know like i really admire um akiko yano i've seen her concert so many times mm -hmm. but it really moves me and um of course kazumi sang actually um so we're we're taking this video in in october of 2021 but i'm performing in his um anniversary concert in november i'm playing oh, with kazumi sang so. you are Fantastic. yeah oh, amazing so wow. i would really love to play with him again and you know what what's so interesting and uh um the rain is yeah coming down. <laughs> <laughs> amazing about this record label or alpha music in general mm -hmm. is is you can take any any record like randomly and it'll be superb you know right so I would, totally. I would love to see anyone perform. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I wish we had more time to talk about like more about who you've been listening to recently mm -hmm. and, and your other influences. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I think we are out of time. Yep. Um, Please check me out on like social media yep. and check my original music out um, because maybe it'll be interesting to find how this this culture influenced yeah. my music too. yeah yeah if, if you like alpha music you will like ray music <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes oh yeah yeah and uh keep an eye out i guess if if this is released around the time of, of those other releases mm -hmm. keep an eye out for the new releases mm -hmm. um also definitely check out the english international version yeah, of yeah, sure. mm -hmm. ray your self-titled album mm -hmm. um yeah, and mm -hmm. thank you so much for thank your time you. and for your performance so and your fun. talent. Thank you. We need to make these longer. <laughs>